section of unit 8 we're going to solve some radical equations man radical equations so today we have scooby-doo in the case of this shady answer all right so we're going to take a look here see what we can do all right we have suspect number one right now and suspect number one is mr kelly Ooh. now we have some equations here these are radical equations this is a third uh, a root and this is a square root couple of things I want to remind you of. Remember, GEMDAS, those are the order of operations. And when we solve equations, we like to solve them backwards, right? So let's see, where would these radicals fit into this situation? Well, that, that would be grouping, all right? So we have grouping. Do I have anything outside of the grouping? No. So really, the first thing I have to undo is grouping. So what's the opposite of taking a third root? Well, that's putting something to the third power. So now over here I have 2x plus 7 because the third power undoes that. And thir 3 to the third is 27. Now I solve it just like normal. I have adding and multiply. I need to get rid of my adding first. So I'm going to track 7 on uh, both sides. I have 2x equals 20. And then divide by 2. And x equals 10. So now... I know Mr. Kelly, when he taught this in algebra, he told you guys to check it. It's real important to check all these answers. We'll find out why today, because someone has shady answers. Let's see if it's Mr. Kelly. So, checking this one, I have the third root of 2 times 10 plus 7. Does that equal 3? So, the third root of 20 plus 7 is at 3. 20 plus 7 is 27. And yes, the third root of 27 is 3, so it does check out. So far, so good. Mr. Sh Mr. Kelly is in the clear right now. Over here we have grouping with the square root. We also have multiply. So again, i got to get everything other over here so I can have my grouping by itself. So the opposite of multiplying by 2 is dividing by 2. And I know a lot of you back in Algebra 1 didn't like this. You didn't understand that this was 2 times the uh, square root of x plus 25. You thought it was adding. It's not. It's multiplying. So now I have the square root of x plus 25 equals 4. The opposite of square rooting something is squaring something. So now I have x plus 25 equals 16. Subtract 25 from both sides. And we find x is negative 9. But we still suspect that Mr. Kelly may have some shady answers. He is kind of a shady character, so we have to check it out. Plug it in, negative 9 plus 25. Does that equal 8? Uh, two, negative 9 plus 25 is 16. Does that eight equal 8? The square root of 16 is 4. 2 times 4, that definitely equals 8. So, so far, Mr. Kelly looks to be in the clear in terms of shady answers. So I want you to pause the video, try these, and then check them on your own, all right? All right, so on this one, we had a lot outside the radical. We had to subtract 3. Then we had to divide by negative 4. So we got x plus 10 equal negative 27, and x was negative 37, and it checked out. On this side, we had to add 2, then square both sides, subtract 3. I know a lot of you probably got scared here because it was a decimal, but decimals check out too. When you multiply them and add 3, you got 144. It's square root of 12 minus 2 is, in fact, 10. So we can clear Mr. Kelly in the case of the shady answers. Let's look at our suspect number 2. Suspect number 2, Mr. Bean. So he has some exponential functions here. So let's take a look. Divide each side by 4. We get x to the 2 thirds is 9. The opposite of raising something to 2 thirds is raising it to the 3 halves because now it cancels and equals 1. So I have to raise this to the 3 halves. This is like taking the square root of 9, which is 3, and then doing 3 to the 3rd, which is 27. So let's see if 27 is a shady answer. 4 times 27 to the 2 thirds, does that equal 36? 
Well, that's the third root of 27. The third root of 27 is 3. 3 to squared is 9. So 4 times 9 does equal 36. So, so far, he checks out. Let's try the next one. Uh, I have grouping with an exponent, and I have minus 1. So I have to do this add 1 to the other side first. So I have c plus 2 to the 3 fourths equals 8. The opposite of raising something to 3 fourths is raising it to the 4 thirds. So now I have c plus 2 equals. So the third root of 8 is 2. 2 to the 4th is 16. Subtract 2 on both sides, and we get c is 14. Let's see if that is a shady answer. So I'm going to plug it back in. 14 plus 2 to the 3 fourths minus 1. Does that equal 7? That's 16 to the 3 fourths. So the fourth root of 16 is 2. 2 to the third is 8. And 8 minus 1 is, in fact, 7. So it checks out. All right, so far, so good. So pause the video, you try these, and then check your answers. So over there we have the opposite of multiplying by 1 seventh is multiplying by the reciprocal 7 over 1. So we got 343 equal to x plus 9 to the 3 halves. We raised each side to the 2 thirds power, which gave us x plus 9 equals 49. Subtracted 9 and we got 40, and it checked out. Over here we divided by 9 on both sides. Then we raise it to the 5 halves power, and we got 32, and again, that checked out. So, Mr. Bean, you're in the clear this time. So that leaves our last suspect, and it's looking pretty good. Let's see who it is. Suspect number three, of course, Mr. Brust. So let's take a look at this one. This time we have square root. All right, the op to get the square root by itself, I have to square this side. And I have to square everything on this side. So that's 7x plus 15 equals, what do I do when I square something? I multiply by itself. So x plus 1 times x plus 1. So this is 7x plus 15. Now I'm going to do this a long way this time, but this is a perfect square trinomial. You should, under, you should know these by now. You should recognize them. I'll do it the long way this time. x times x is x squared. x times 1 is 1x. 1 times x is 1x, and 1 times 1 is 1. So that gives us 7x plus 15 equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now to solve this, I have an x squared. I need to get everything over here because I have a squared. So I'm going to subtract 7x and subtract 15. And that gives me 0 equals x squared minus 5x minus 14. Well, we need to factor. I need two numbers that multiply to negative 14 and add to negative 5. That's easy. That's x minus 7 and x plus 2. Use my zero product property. x minus 7 equals 0. x plus 2 equals 0. So I could have x is 7 or x is negative 2. All right, now we have two answers, so we're going to have to check it twice. So 7 times 7 plus 15 does that equal 7 plus 1? 7 times 7 is 49. 49 plus 15 is 64. Square root of 64 is 8. So 8 equals 8. That does check out. Let's try the next one. 7 times negative 2 plus 15. Does that equal negative 2 plus 1? So that's 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. Negative 14 plus 15 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 and 1, they do not equal each other. So is x equals negative 2 an answer? No, it is not. The only answer here is x equals 7. Mr. Brust, you are busted. All right? This is what we call an extraneous solution. It's an apparent solution that must be rejected because it does not satisfy the original equation. So you find your answer, you check them, and then if it doesn't work, it's called an extraneous solution. It's an extra solution. It doesn't satisfy the original equation, so we cannot count it as an answer. Let's see if he's notorious for these extraneous solutions, shall we? All right, so now this one's a little tricky. 
Um, how do I get rid of this side, the square root on this side? We have to get rid of these square roots. So I'm going to square the whole thing. Now I have to square the whole thing on this side. Don't just square the radical. You square the whole side here. You have to square the whole side there. So this means 3 minus x. And over here I'm doing the square root of x plus 2 plus 1 times the square root of x plus 2 plus 1. So x squared plus 2, or x, the square root of x plus 2 times the square root of x plus 2 is just x plus 2. The square root of x plus 2 times 1 is the square root of x plus 2. 1 times that is the square root of x plus 2. And 1 times 1 is 1 equals 3 minus x. I'm going to subtract these x's. So minus x over here, I get negative 2x. 2 plus 1 is 3. I'm going to subtract 3 over to the other side, and I get 0. So what is left? I have one of these two. I have 2x plus 2's equals negative 2x. So I'm going to divide by 2. So the square root of x plus 2 equals negative x. Now it looks like an equation we did earlier. I have to square this side. I have to square this side. So x plus 2 equals a negative square. That's going to be a positive x squared. Bring it over. So I'm going to subtract x, and I'm going to subtract 2. So now I have 0 equals x squared minus x minus 2. We need to factor that. So we have two numbers that multiply to negative 2 and add to 1. All right, equals 0. So our zero product property, x minus 2 equals 0, so x would be 2, or x plus 1 equals 0, subtract 1, x would equal negative 1. So we have two answers, and we know Mr. Bruss throws out some shady answers, so we need to check it. So let's try the first one. 2 plus 2 plus 1, does that equal the square root of 3 minus 2? Let's see, 2 plus 2 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 1, does that equal 3 minus 2 is 1? That's 3 equals 1. No, that does not work. Therefore, x equals 2 is an extraneous answer, and it doesn't count. Now, do we even have to check the next one? I mean, obviously, if it's 1, if one of them works, then the other mu if, the other, if one doesn't work, the other one must work, right? Not so. What if both of them didn't work? We'd have no solution. So if we have no, we have to check both of them because if this one doesn't work, then it's a no solution. So we have to check it. So is negative 1 plus 2 plus 1 equal to 3 minus negative 1? Let's check. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. The square root of 1 plus 1, the square root of 1 is 1. 1 plus 1, that's 2. Let's see what we got over here. 3 minus negative 1, well remember add the opposite, that's 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. So it does check out this time. We don't have a no solution. We have actually have the answer, negative 1. All right? So pause the video. You try this one. I'm going to give you a clue. I would move this whole thing here to the other side first. All right? So I added the cube root of 8x plus 15 to both sides. Then what I was able to do was I was able to raise each side of the third power. I got 12x minus 5 it'll equals 8x plus 15. Got my x's together, added 5, divided by 4, and I got x is 5. I checked this solution over here, and it did work, so we are good. So, Mr. Brust, you got one good answer. Congratulations. All right, let's try these. So, pause the video, and you try these right there on your own, and then we'll see what we got. So right here I add 73, then I have to ra raise both sides to 3 fifths power, so I can get x minus 5 by itself equals 27, add 5, and I get 32, and of course it checks out. On this one, I got rid of the 3 and the 4, I got to combine those, alright, that was the first thing I did, I thought it'd make my life a little bit better, and it does, then I square both sides, there's a little tricky here, this is a, you know, perfect square trinomial, so it's the square of the first, double the middle, and the square of the last. 
Got my common terms over here, subtract 3x, subtract 4, because there's 3 plus 1 is 4, so I'm going to subtract 4 the other side. That gave me 2x plus 2. I divided by 2, got x plus 1. Then I had to square both sides to get rid of the radical. So I got x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 3x plus 3. Subtracted 3x. Had a factor. I had two solutions. I had to check them out to see if they were any extraneous solutions. And in this case, both worked. So you have to understand, sometimes you'll have no answers, which means no solution. Neither of the answers will work. Extraneous. They're both extraneous. Sometimes you're going to have both of them work. That, that's great. And sometimes you only have one work, so you'll have one extraneous solution, all right? So that's chapter uh, eight. I'm going to have a little video here, uh, one of my favorite SNL Saturday Night Live commercials growing up as a kid. It's all about happy fun ball. Just be careful. you got to watch out for those warnings, all right? Good luck on the master check, and I will definitely see you on the flip side.